Hi guys! So I'm now in Stratford upon Avon and you're literally looking at the main street here and behind me is the Shakespeare Centre and obviously right next to it you have Shakespeare's birthplace. I don't know if you can see it with the frontal camera. I'll be bringing you guys along this journey as I explore this place. So I remember I came here when I was in my undergraduate, um, I think it was my second year. My um, Shakespeare slash early modern English professor took us here for a really nice excursion, I'd say. I remember not really being able to explore the place as much as I would have liked, obviously because we were rushing to see a production, I think, of, I think it was probably Richard II or like one of the Henry plays. Tonight I'll be checking out War of the Roses, put on by the Royal Shakespeare Company so I'll keep you guys updated but in the meantime this is Stratford it's a lovely place uh, the sun's just come out hopefully this is going to shape up to be a beautiful day and um, yeah so that there in the background is Shakespeare's birthplace yeah So behind me is the museum at the Shakespeare Centre. I think a couple of key takeaways from the exhibition there. One of the things that really resonated with me is the fact that Shakespeare received free education and he went to this local grammar school where he was given access to classics and history texts, a lot of which he obviously drew on for some of his most famous works. For example, you have William Lilly's short book of grammar and also you have Holland Shed's Chronicles, which he used as a source text, right, for obviously like Macbeth and Richard and Henry, etc. So um, obviously a free quality grammar school education was integral to Shakespeare's success and that's also partly kind of like the inspiration right for for what I'm doing with my YouTube my blog and the Instagram just trying to widen access to quality education resources because as we can see from Shakespeare's example you know that really is something that could massively not just change one person's life but also change culture for generations and generations on end right so it really is something great yeah so now i'm gonna head on over to to see shakespeare's birthplace i'm actually gonna see that old house that he used to, to live in i'll uh, keep you guys posted so we're in shakespeare's birthplace house right now It's really funny how like I think this is like the stuff of novelty. <laughs> this is the hall, the dining hall. And this is the bedroom of Shakespeare's children. So this is the part of the extension called the Swan and the Maidenhead which was apparently um, converted into an inn after Shakespeare's father died in 1601. Oh my god, take my money. An entire bookshop. It's like dedicated to Shakespeare's work. Can you believe it? So I'm now at Shakespeare's new place, which is basically his home and retirement. 
obviously it's all done up, um, massively renovated and very modern. Um, but yeah, but obviously still interesting to check out. So I'm now at this place called the Great Garden. It's a massive garden. It's part of the grounds at Shakespeare's new place, which is basically uh, a place he bought for Shakespeare bought for his retirement in 1597. And so it's got lots of greenery, quite different in vibes from the one we just saw, which was his birthplace. Lots more greenery, and apparently Shakespeare names more than 150 types of flowers and plants in his plays. So he was quite the um, horticulturalist, one might say. Obviously you see um, the gardeners here doing Shakespeare justice. Beautifully created flowers, beautifully grown flowers, everywhere. Shakespeare's birthplace trust. So the other thing I wanted to say is just the environment that one grows up in is massively important. Like with Shakespeare, he was basically a product of a very cultured environment. So he lived in a time when reading, um, learning, and obviously like culture were all integral to his upbringing. And it wasn't so much that he had to consciously make an effort to do these things, to be involved in these things, but rather they were just part and parcel of his immediate environment. This is something that's really important just kind of, you know, as a point to reflect on when it comes to thinking about education in our time. Not so much kind of coming up with artificial ways of encouraging learning, but more so thinking about how we can integrate and embed sources and inspiration of learning in our environment, right? And just kind of making culture part of what we live and breathe, which is essentially why Shakespeare was so great because he lived and breathed culture and writing and ideas. It was a time of ideas. I think it would be a real shame if we stopped placing a premium on ideas, if we seized investment and funding in those things that may not seem to grant immediate returns, but are nonetheless pillars and foundations for the strength and the longevity, I guess you can say, of a civilization. This sort of intellectual openness and creativity and imagination, I think the encouragement of this sort of climate is largely why Shakespeare uh, was able to produce the amount of works that he did and why we still respect him so much down to this day when it comes to this sort of respect, it's global, right? And it's really worth thinking about, you know, I guess putting aside just kind of obviously like colonial interpretations of why we still care about Shakespeare. Um, I think it's really, really important for us to think about why an encouragement of culture is the, the source of perhaps the strength and the longevity and the sustainability, I guess you could say, of an entire civilization and people. Hi guys, so I figured that I would do a quick update and reflection on the uh, War of the Roses production that I went to see in Stratford. Essentially it's a con conflation of all the um, Henry VI plays. It's about the power struggle between the House of York and Lancaster. Right, You had a somewhat feeble but also good-intentioned Henry VI, who obviously can't really rule or measure up against the more aggressive dukes around him. Right, So um, obviously you had the Duke of York winning the war at St Albans and then you know proceeding to usurp the throne. And this massively enrages Margaret who is the queen and she then summons up her own army to fight against 
um, the Yorkist factions. One of the most important points that stood out to me was uh, BAME representation. So there was a considerable BAME representation where we saw the RSC really making an effort to broaden the diversity of um, their cast. And I thought that was, that was good to see. So you had black actors and actresses cast in the main roles. We also saw the use of actresses in male roles, which is really interesting because when you think about it, back in Shakespeare's own time, um, it was the opposite, right? Women were not allowed on stage. And so what happened was it was male actors who would have to play female roles, right? And now we see um, a conscious effort of reversing that. But the other interesting thing I noticed was the juxtaposition of the diversity and the cast makeup against the, the audience demographic, right? Because I think most of the people around me were, as you'd expect, um, white and or mature, right? I think most of them were at least over um, 50. <laughs> and I was thinking about why that was the case, right? And obviously, you know, one of the key barriers when it comes to Shakespeare or appreciating Shakespeare is language. So if one is not familiar with the language with English, let alone Shakespearean English, obviously the experience of watching a Shakespearean production um, would seem quite inaccessible, right? But the thing is, um, I realised that that doesn't have to be the case. I certainly didn't understand every single word that was said by the actors, um, and obviously it was all in Shakespearean English, but uh, adapted. But it didn't take away the value and the quality of the experience for me. It was actually really action-packed, it was super engaging, um, and you know, like, I think it's really about appreciating Shakespeare in a multifaceted way, right? Um, when, when we're reading a Shakespearean play, what often happens is we're looking at it as if it were a static text, and so the emphasis is then placed hugely on the language and of course because the language is a barrier it, it massively it somewhat takes away the in the level of engagement one can have with the text right especially if we're not familiar with the language but when it comes to watching Shakespeare as a performance a lot of that consideration around language as a barrier is in fact removed because not distracted per se but we are um, attracted by the other aspects the setup of the stage the use of lighting music the energy the performance the emotions the facial expressions the gestures everything it becomes a much more organic and dynamic experience for us and that's why I think perhaps you know, the best way um, to help increase access to literature, um, not just Shakespeare, is to perhaps reimagine the way we deliver texts with other mediums. We see animated versions of novels, right, of classic novels. That's one way of making literature more engaging. And then, of course, you know, with Shakespeare, the funny thing is that when it was written in the first place, the plays were intended to be what we would nowadays consider to be like a TV show or like a really engaging film or something. It's about thinking about literature not just as a static text, but engaging with it as a live, organic work that is ever evolving with the times, right? Because, you know, for example, with a 50% Bane cast, the way we receive the content of Shakespeare's work would be very different from how Shakespeare's contemporary audience would have received it as a purely white and purely male cast, right? Something that really is what makes Shakespeare so valuable is that his work is so malleable and adaptable regardless of the time and space that we're in. And in fact, this reminds me of an experience I had back when I was at university. I went to Tsinghua University in Beijing during the summer for, for a brief teaching stint. And um, I remember that the students there put on a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And in that sort of environment, the cast and the, the setup, etc., would be wildly different from what you'd expect in you know an anglospheric environment but nonetheless it was engaging it was its own take on a Shakespearean classic a Shakespearean comedy and it worked really well too I think it really just goes to show that despite there obviously always being these cultural and geographical differences if a piece of work is truly timeless it becomes resistant actually to those so-called barriers of culture and geography and and instead it absorbs them in ways that make the original work much more engaging with much more depth and value.
Yeah, so I figured that this would just be a brief sort of recap on my experience. I really enjoyed the production. The cast was incredible. Uh, you had quite a few of them being veterans, having been in a lot of RSC productions and also in films. But then, in fact, there were also a couple of actors and actresses who had their debut with this specific production, the RSC's War of the Roses. I thought everyone was fantastic, the cast was diverse and it was a refreshing take on one of the most important periods um, in English history. So yeah, I hope um, this encourages you guys to also go check out War of the Roses if you're ever in the area, if you ever feel like you want to make a day trip out of going to Shakespeare's birthplace. Um, and I hope you enjoy uh, this vlog. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these vlogs going forward. It's obviously an effort to, you know, take a literary pilgrimage like the one I did with my Stratford upon Avon day trip. But um, if this is interesting stuff, then perhaps I could look into ways of doing this. Um, I remember I did one a couple of years ago when I went to Dublin. Obviously, you know, the birthplace of a lot of the literary giants, Oscar Wilde, and then you also had James Joyce, etc. So yeah, I thought that was um, that was a great experience. But you know, back then I didn't have this channel so clearly I <laughs> didn't, didn't really take any footage that I can share now but let me know if this is of interest and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!